Hello, today we are going to be talking about correlation coefficients. So correlation is a word we might have come across in English and it just means are two things connected. Does As one thing changes, does something else change? As we have one variable and it changes, does another variable change with it? So you've dealt with situations like this a lot in science. When you've drawn graphs in science, say if you had a spring, you would have dealt with uh, formulas like when you had uh, your spring, you would have had the force on the spring and it would have been equal to some constant multiplied by how far you'd stretched the spring. So this type of relationship will give a connection between the force you apply, how hard you pull the string, the spring apart, uh, and uh, how far you have spread the e, uh, spring apart. So if you remember back to that, uh, type of experiments that you would have done in junior cert science or for those of you who uh, do physics you'll have done lots of these type of experiments uh, where you'll look at the uh, relationship between two variables and as one changes how does the other change and that's what we're going to look at uh, today so if I look at this first grass graph that I have drawn here. This is called a scatter plot where I have one variable, the temperature in degrees Celsius along the x-axis, and I have the number of ice creams sold by a shop along the y-axis. If they ask you to draw a graph, the first block of marks is labeling axes and maybe plotting two or three points correctly. So labeling your axes clearly and plotting your points is dead easy way to uh, get your first block of marks if they ask a question like this. And statistics is probably going to be quite important on the exam this year. They like to follow current events and statistics is going to be very important in terms of the pandemic. So we're talking about statistics. We're going to be making sure that we're really thinking everything through because it is somewhat likely that they are going to look at it for the exam. Now, let's have a look at our scatter plot. I've got the number of ice creams sold here and I have the temperature uh, here in my table. So they could give you a table like this and I've left out two of the points to just remind you of how it is these tables would work. If I have a temperature of 13 degrees on that day when I had a temperature of 13 degrees the shop sold six ice creams. So I go across to 13 on my temperature scale and I go up to six on my ice cream scale. So I put a dot up there and I can use a big clear dot and as those of you who do the sciences as will know you'll often put a circle around them to keep things looking a little neat I haven't bothered here but you can put a circle around them if you think that it's a little uh, that they points disappear a little bit on your graph paper and then if I have a temperature of 15 degrees on that day that we had a temperature of 15 degrees the shop sold seven ice creams so 15 degrees and I go up to seven on my ice cream scale so seven over here on my ice creams sold so that's how i can fill in a scatter plot you're required to know what a scatter plot is it's just this type of grass graph that you have all drawn loads of times in science uh, and it's um, called a scatter plot uh, and you can be asked to draw them in the exams uh, and always always be careful that you have your axes uh, drawn in and units as clearly labeled as possible now, the next thing that they can ask you about is how strongly correlated is some data. So if we draw a graph, if we have things that are perfectly correlated with each other, that means as uh, one thing changes, the other thing changes by exactly the same amount each time. If we take our second example here, we have the number of Ford cards, cars sold in a particular dealership. Uh, and we have on particular days uh, and then we have the number of ice creams sold by our shop uh, again so on a day when there was one Ford car sold there were nine ice creams sold and on the day when there were two Ford cars sold there were eight ice creams sold and so on down you can see that as the number of Ford cars sold goes up the number of ice creams sold on the same day goes down and it goes down perfectly by the same amount each time there's a perfect relationship between these two things that means that they are perfectly correlated 
there is a perfect correlation between them. And in this case, we would say it's a perfect negative correlation because as the number of Ford cars goes up, the number of ice cream sold goes down. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So we say it is a negative correlation. And because it all happens perfectly in a line, we say that it is a perfect negative correlation. So a perfect negative correlation. So perfect negative correlation is this situation here, whereas one thing goes up, the other thing goes down by the same amount each time. So you end up with a dead straight line from your graph. If I look at my original example here, as the temperature goes up, the number of ice cream sold kind of generally goes up, but you can see there are some hills and hollows to this. They're not all sitting in a perfectly straight line. So there's not perfect correlation between the temperature going up and the ice creams going up, but they do seem to go up uh, at the same time. As temperature increases, the number of ice creams sold increases. So there's a bit of a connection between the two. There's a bit of a correlation between the two sets of data, but it's not perfect. But because they're fairly close to being in a straight line, and this is a judgment call, unfortunately, you have to be able to make uh, in the exam, you can be asked to give a word answer without enough information to give a proper uh, number answer. So this is fairly close to being in a straight line. As one goes up, the other goes up. So we would say that it has a strong positive correlation because as one goes up, the other goes up, and it's a fairly reliable increase. So as the temperature goes up, the number of ice creams sold goes up by a fairly predictable rate. So there's a bit of a correlation, or a quite a strong correlation, I should say, between our temperature on the day and our number of ice cream sold. And as one goes up, the other goes up. So we say that this is a strong positive correlation. So strong positive correlation. Finally, if we look at our number of ice cream sold, in this graph here on the right, number of our ice cream sold versus the number of days since the last full moon. Uh, in our graph here, we can see that there doesn't appear to be any correlation at all. One day, uh, two days after the uh, full moon, we had six ice creams sold. The next day, we had two ice creams sold. The next day, we had seven ice creams sold. It's all over the place. There doesn't appear to be any relationship that you can see. There's no line that you can look at going either up or down. This is just all over the place. So we say that there's no correlation. No correlation between these two sets of data. There's no uh, correlation at all between the number of days since the full moon and the e number of ice creams sold. Now you can possibly see that uh, from the examples that I've got here that correlation and causation aren't necessarily the same thing. So correlation means that as one thing goes up, the other or goes up or down in a kind of predictable fashion. And causation would mean that there was something causing, one thing was causing another thing to happen. So if we think about the temperature on a particular day, when it's two degrees outside, very few people want to eat ice cream on average. As we get up into warmer weather, people like eating ice cream more. You see lots of people out with ice cream cones on lovely east sunny days in the summer. So as the temperature increases, there's a reason why, or we can predict, we can give an argument for why there would be an increase in the number of ice cream sold. So we'd say there might be a causal relationship between the temperature on a particular day and the number of ice creams sold. Now we haven't proved that, but we can say there could be a causal relationship. There's a reason, there's an argument we can give. It's actually quite complicated scientifically to prove causation, and in some senses it's not possible, but there are sensible scientific ways of showing causation between two things to within reasonable degrees of probability. You don't need to know them for the leaving cert, so I'm just going to mention that they exist. You can, uh, by doing clever multiple clever experiments, 
be fairly certain of when one variable causes another to happen. Uh, and we can see intuitively that there might be a good reason why as temperature increases, ice cream sold would increase, and that's as far as we need to go for the leaving cert. However, we could end up with a perfect correlation, in this case a perfect negative correlation, and there be no connection whatsoever between the two data sets. So if there's a dealership that sells Ford cars and uh, it's selling a particular number of cars and we look at another, at an ice cream parlor, an ice cream shop, uh, and see how many ice creams they sell, there's no logical connection between those two things at all, or at least we've no reason to suspect there is, but we can still see a connection between our data in terms of a correlation. But there's no causal link. The number of Ford cars sold does not affect the number of ice cream sold. There's no causal link between the two things, even though there's a perfect correlation between the two things. So correlation and causation are not the same thing. They are logically connected to each other, but they're not the same thing. You can see that we can have a causal uh, relationship between things and not have perfect correlation, or we could have a perfect correlation between things and not have any causal link whatsoever. So that's the kind of general idea of correlation uh, and causation. The last bit I'm going to mention is the a correlation coefficient, which is a number that you can get. So if you had perfect uh, if you had perfect positive correlation, so perfect positive correlation, uh, positive correlation would be given an OR value, a correlation uh, number of plus one. And a strong uh, positive correlation, like the one that we have between temperature and ice cream sales, would have a OR value of uh, 0 0.93. In this particular case, I went to my calculator and I found out what the OR value was for this data set, and it is 0 0.93. You can see that's very close to 1, uh, which would be perfect positive correlation. So oh, in this case, we have very, very good uh, positive correlation at 0 0.93. If we had something like or was 0 0.5, we'd say that we had weak positive correlation. If we look at our ice cream sold versus our Ford car sales, we have perfect negative correlation. And the way that we say that is we have an or value of minus one. So you can see there's just a sign change. Perfect positive correlation, as one goes up, the other goes up, is going to be plus one, perfect negative correlation is going to be minus one. As one goes up, the other goes down. So that's our uh, correlation values. And here, where there is no correlation whatsoever, you would expect the correlation value to be somewhere around zero. Not perfectly zero necessarily, but somewhere around zero or 0 0.01 or something mm, fairly close to zero, where there's no correlation between our two data sets. And that's the basic idea of our scatter plot and of our words that we would use for correlation. Uh, and uh, separately on the PowerPoints that I have given you, I've shown for both, I have given you for both Casio and Sharp calculators the way that you calculate the correlation coefficient. You must be able to calculate correlation coefficients for data sets it can come up directly on the exam and your calculator is the only way you can do it. So uh, I've simply given you those as separate pieces of information because video isn't ideal for or my type of video isn't ideal for showing you that. So those are the different parts that we need for the basics of correlation coefficients.